you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to this channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2023 honda civic hatchback courtesy of apple honda of hanover in hanover pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so we're in this one today because there is actually one major change for the 2023 civic hatch not only that i love the exterior styling on this one i said that in the civic sedan review i just did and you also get two years or 24,000 miles of complimentary maintenance with all new Hondas as well, which is pretty darn cool. But ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering fuel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2023 civic hatch first one being the sport which is the one we are in today starting at twenty five thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars exl for twenty eight thousand one hundred and fifty dollars and then the sport touring for thirty thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars so you may have noticed with those trim levels that one major change there is no more lx trim level for the civic hatch for 2023 so the bottom trim level is now the one we are in today being the sport but having said that there are two different power plants for the civic hatch first one is going to belong to our sport trim level that one is powered by a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder putting out 158 horsepower at 6500 rpm 138 pound feet of torque coming in at 4200 rpm power being sent to the front wheels through a six speed manual or a CVT. I love that the six speed manual is still available though. Zero to 60 time, approximately 9.2 seconds, with MPG numbers coming in at 26 in the city, 36 on the highway for the manual transmission, then 29 city, 37 highway for the CVT, taking regular unleaded fuel but so then there is that other power plant and that's going to be coming standard with the exl and the sport touring that one is powered by a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder 180 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 177 pound feet of torque coming in at 1700 rpm again power sent to the front wheels through a six speed manual again as an option or a cvt and by the way that's a sport touring option only for the six speed manual but zero to 60 time for that one approximately 7.3 seconds mpg number then coming in at 28 in the city 37 highway for the manual 31 city 39 on the highway for the cvt again though taking regular unleaded fuel but so then before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in our civic hatch i wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes there is a toggle switch located directly behind the shifter and by the way drive modes are for the cvt only not the six speed manual but drive modes will include econ normal and sport adjusting things like the shift points throttle response steering sensitivity and the climate control settings as well. So now how we got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find it straight away. Let's put the paddle shifters here to the test and let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here. All right, here's your straight away. Got in the first gear. Here we go. Not really a gear, it's a CVT, but yeah. Hey, quick, quick man. I mean, it simulates an automatic pretty darn go with the paddle shifter, so we'll say that, but it is a CVT. It's technically not shifting through gears, but if you wanted to have some fun with the paddle shifters, they are there, and they do a pretty darn good job. I will say that, but now let's give back full control to the Civic Hatch here, and let's find one more straightaway here. Let's put the acceleration here to the test, and let's see how quickly our sport trim level, keep in mind, we got the naturally aspirated four-cylinder here. Let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, you guys, in three, Two, one, here you go. Yes, CVT. <laughs> All right, it's definitely something you get used to. Not the quickest thing in the world, but that's okay. That's what we got the turbocharged four cylinder for if you wanted a little better acceleration. And you know what this engine needs is here for? This engine, if I could talk, this engine is here for reliability. If you wanted the more reliable engine, go with the sport trim level. If you wanted the more powerful engine, go with the EXL or the sport touring. That is essentially why you got two engine configurations here. So having said that, this one's not the quickest, but it would be something that you would get used to, I'm sure. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, 
braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 11.1 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 10.2 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 6 easier or stopping distance goes, that comes in at 122 feet, which is perfectly fine. It's pretty much on par for the course there. So as far as braking feel goes, it's perfectly fine. It's not super on the firm side. It's not on the loose side either. It feels pretty much as you would expect a compact car to feel like. So braking feels been perfectly fine in my short test drive here today. Then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, you do tend to feel a little bit more on the road in compact cars. I will say that. So I have been feeling a decent amount of the road and Pennsylvania's roads aren't the best quite honestly. So I always feel a decent amount of the road, but as far as steering feel goes, I really like it. So when you put it in that sport driving mode, it does heavy up a good bit. So you can instantly tell the difference. It's a much heavier feel to the steering. Then when I put it back in normal driving mode here, it's still a little bit on the heavier side, which I like. Gives the driver a better feeling of being in control in my personal opinion. So steering feel in the Civic is definitely 100% on point. As far as cabin noise goes, do tend to hear a little bit more of the road noise because we're in a compact car. So it's not something that would personally bother me. And the wind noise though, that's definitely kept perfectly at bay. So I haven't had any issues there. It's just a little bit of road noise, that's all. Then touching on visibility, I actually can see perfectly fine out the back. That isn't always the case in hatchbacks, but in this one, I can see perfectly fine out the back. And in addition to that, there are rain sensing windshield wipers coming on the sport touring trim level only. What that is, is it's essentially it's going to detect any kind of mist or rainfall. When it does that, it's gonna automatically turn on these windshield wipers for you. So it's just one last thing you gotta worry about there. So that is definitely pretty darn convenient for forward visibility there as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 honda civic hatchback all right so here she is you guys the new 2023 honda civic hatchback finished in platinum white pearl and that's a pretty cool color actually it has a nice little i don't know what to call it like a sparkle to it when you get up close but anyways let's go ahead and start with where the civic hatch is made taking a look at the vin first character is the number one indicating that the civic hatch is actually built and assembled in the US, so Indiana specifically. So fun fact, the Civic Sedan is built in Canada, Civic Hatch is built in the US, so kind of interesting there. But let's go ahead and take a look up front. LED headlights do come standard on every single trim level across the board, love that. LED daytime running lights, of course, coming with that, and the automatic feature, and automatic high beams. So let me elaborate on that last one there. Automatic high beams, so when you have your high beams on at night, it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction. It's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically then bounce it back up to high beams. My wife loves that feature. I do too, that's definitely very convenient. And if you were to go with the Sport Touring down below, you will get LED fog lights as well. Otherwise, you're gonna get these kind of little black cutouts. But either way, front end definitely looks good without a doubt. I loved the redesign of the Civic when it first came out, still do. So having said that, let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of this one. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the Civic hatch, definitely a nice look in the back there without a doubt. But black window surrounds do come standard. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors do come standard. Unless you go with the Sport, then you're gonna get gloss black side mirrors, which of course is what you guys are looking at. Heated side mirrors coming with the EXL and Sport Touring and then you also get LED integrated turn signals with the Sport Touring specifically but then take a look down at the wheel setup 17 inch alloys coming with the EXL but for both Sport trim levels being the Sport that we have today and the Sport Touring you will find 18 inch alloys which is what you guys are looking at but like I said the back end is the best look to this one so having said that that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so but now since we are around to the back of this one body colored shark fin and all the way to the top rear window wiper and what's even better it's not just a rear window wiper you actually have the little uh, cleaners on the back window there too so if it gets too incredibly dirty you could spray that uh, rear window washer fluid I guess you could call it that'll help you with cleaning the back end I think that's interesting because I know on my RSX back in the day I had a rear window wiper but I didn't have the washer fluid back there so I like that they put that there big fan but anyways LED taillights do come standard and the design to the LED taillights are very unique I love the design to it got that sport badging back there as well you got a pretty nice looking rear diffuser down underneath as well and there is a single exhaust outlet believe it or not tucked away underneath on the passenger side there but if you go with the sport touring you will get dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips so if you wanted the fancy exhaust look go with the sport touring but having said that I do still believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip All 
car hasn't so been out since we were around to the back of this one. When it comes to opening that rear hatch, there is a button on the key fob to unlock it, but ultimately it is a manual hatch and quite honestly, it's kind of heavy. It's a lot heavier than I expected, but anyways, it's not too bad. But once it opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 24.5 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. But there's actually quite a bit going on back there. So you do have cargo lighting, of course. You do have a cargo cover though as well i liked that you also have a grocery bag hook back there didn't expect to see that and some chrome plated tie down anchors back there as well so quite a bit going on almost suv like but anyways if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you will also find a spare tire as opposed to the fix a flat as well so now let's go ahead and make our way up to the rear legroom that's going to come in at 37.4 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there if you wanted a rear center armrest with cup holders go with the EXL or the Sport Touring. That's why we don't have that with us today. Dual rear USB charging ports for the Sport Touring trim level as well. And unfortunately, no rear ventilation for those rear passengers. You might not need it in the size of a vehicle though, I will say that, but then make our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the Sport, leather seating for the EXL and Sport Touring, eight-way power adjustable driver seat for the EXL and Sport Touring. You will also get a four-way power adjustable passenger seat for the Sport Touring as well, and heated front seats for the EXL and Sport Touring too. So honestly though, with our manually adjustable cloth seats, they weren't that bad. Side bolsters are done pretty well. So ultimately, as far as seat comfort goes, it was perfectly fine for me on my short little test drive. So no issues there, but then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It did telescope out pretty darn far as well. So if you're a taller individual, this might be perfect for you because the telescoping part was pretty darn good leather wrap steering wheel though actually does come standard for all trim levels across the board so i did like that as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key you got your honda logo on the one side when you flip it over lock unlock the button to pop through your hatch and the uh, circular button that says hold that is going to be your remote start which comes on the cvt transmission only but ultimately it is keyless entry with a push button start for all trim levels across the board so all i'm going to do here is simply put my front of the brake and press that black and red engine start button located just kind of by the driver's right knee. And so once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is on your right. And there are some steering wheel mount controls found on the left side to control what is on the left side of that uh, kind of digital gauge cluster there. So there's a bunch of different options. You got settings, you got volume, you can uh, customize the display a little bit. Of course, it's gonna show your drive modes up there. There's a digital speedometer, uh, trip A, trip B, outside temperature, pretty much everything you could possibly want on the uh, the left side digital display basically so no issues with that but then making our way to overall interior quality a power moonroof is going to come with the exl and sport touring automatic climate control for the sport dual zone climate control for the exl and sport touring auto dimming rear view mirror with home link controls for the sport touring as well i love that aluminum foot pedals of course coming with the sport trim levels that's what i'm showing you guys right now i liked those as well was also a fan of the honeycomb kind of mesh design right around the air vents i still like that i think that's a pretty cool look to it just in front of the shifter you got a little bit of rubberized storage usb charging port there 12 volt power outlet just to the right of the shifter you do have uh, dual cup holders there and i like kind of the uh the nice plastic finish surrounding all the cup holders. It's not a matte plastic. It, it actually looks darn good. So I am a fan of that. Electromechanical parking brake just behind the shifter as well. And within the center armrest, actually a decent amount of storage, much more than the Corolla. I can tell you guys that. The only thing I would knock the interior quality for is these kind of black, matte black plastic inserts found on the doors here. I think they could address that up a little bit. I don't know if you wanna make it a gloss black or the same material that is used around the cup holders to put on that. Just something more than just a, a boring matte black plastic is all I'm saying, they could have done that. but. Anyways, interior quality will definitely get the job done. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. Seven inch color touchscreen display coming with the Sport and the EXL. Nine inch color touchscreen display coming with the Sport Touring. You still get Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, but for the Sport Touring, you actually get wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, by the way, so that's pretty darn cool. Factory navigation system coming with the Sport Touring as well. And of course, you can check out your radio information up there. So when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them. You get an eight speaker sound system with 180 watts for the Sport and EXL. And then for the Sport Touring, you're gonna find a 12 speaker Bose sound system with the subwoofer, of course. So having said that, we have the eight speaker sound system with us here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today and 
Let's test out the clarity of this one. I think I said this in the Civic Sedan review as well, that the bass is decent. I will say the bass is decent. Clarity is not doing it for me in this one. Um, I'm just gonna be honest. So wouldn't have minded a little better clarity, but having said that, you still got the Bose sound system available. So if you do like music, go with the Sport Touring because that sound system should blow you away. I haven't tested it um, at least recently, so I will say that. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the Civic hatch in reverse, you will find a rear view camera with a few different angles as well, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. That pretty much says it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard Honda Sensing. And so what that gives you is a collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, traffic jam assist, and traffic sign recognition then as well. So I did want to add to that if you go with the EXL, you're going to get a blind spot monitoring system. And then the sport touring is going to add to that rear cross traffic alert and front and rear parking sensors. But ultimately, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Civic hatch, I love that a six speed manual is still available in the Civic hatch. So if you wanted to get something fun, that's not quite as expensive as a Civic SI, and you still wanted the manual, that's what the Civic hatch is for. So I'm a big fan of that. And by the way, that six speed manual isn't available on the Civic sedan. So I did want to mention that as well. Still love the design of this one. It's got excellent safety with that IIHS top safety pick plus as well. Very affordable pricing still, though it is more than last year because they uh, kind of canceled the LX trim level, but it's still affordable. Really the only two things, I think it's the same thing as the Civic sedan. I would love for them to fix this matte black plastic found in the doors. It's very low quality. And also multicolor ambient lighting, I think would do really, really well in all civics for that matter just because it's kind of a generational thing and uh i just think it would look awesome but anyways that about rounds out this review you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in the new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold